Uh, today, I will talk about uh, uh, the leveraging pool of the infrastructure for high performance computing. Um, my name is Lin Yang from the Intel Corporation. And uh, you can find me with uh, Twitter ID. Uh, even I didn't post uh, so much on Twitter. I'm an uh, OpenStack coder, author, and speaker. And uh, this session is collaborated with uh, two NEC folks, uh, Anusha and Akil. Uh, today, I will start with the current basic status of data center uh, and uh, what's the challenge for it and uh, how the hyperscale data center can help to address this problem. Uh, then I will introduce the Intel Rack Scale Design Technology and the OpenStack uh, Violence Project. Mm. Uh, and uh, how users can use it to meet the different uh, workload requirement. And uh, the final step is the demo. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, there are two key technologies in current data center, virtualization and uh, cloud computing. Uh, now, in data center, many resources goes unused with uh, virtualization. Uh, a separate layer is created uh, above the hardware resource. So, uh, resource can be allocated to the multi-tenants. And uh, why, why is the cloud computing? This might be a stupid question. Uh, the answer is quite simple, just about the money, right? So, uh, Managing a data center requires additional maintenance staff to handle the hardware cost, like uh, mm, space, networking, bandwidth, the cooling, the power, something like that. So currently, uh, for the data center, the problem here is uh, the data center still encounters several uh, challenges in terms of the uh, flexibility, scalability, and uh, util utilization issue. Uh, I, sorry. Okay. Yeah, uh, it requires the ability to, uh, you know, to config uh, the cloud according to the different uh, demands, different requirements. So. Uh, the traditional data center have a static, uh, st uh, static computing infrastructure. You have a fixed number uh, of, of server. Uh, each have a, a, a set of uh, CPUs and a fixed amount of memories. Uh, okay, next. Sorry, I missed them. Sorry, give me a second. So, however, you know, the workload is especially in the commercial data center, the workload is changed. You have a different demands for each workload. So, but, uh, for example, uh, in a data center, you must have uh, you know, the enough resource to cover the peak demand. But uh, uh, for the, uh, the same resource, it, uh, will, uh, you, it will not be used for the non-peak condition. And uh, the situation is going worse when it faces to the new requirement of the big data IoT AI demands. According to a survey, uh, by 2020, there will be a 15 billion device connected to the internet. And uh, all devices will generate a large quantity of uh, data and uh, will communicate uh, uh, at a higher, uh, higher bandwidth. So the data, uh, the data center needs to a uh, great uh, flexibility to address this demand to make sure it can easily reconfig hardware and software as need. Uh, to scale on demands without uh, the additional cost of uh, you know, the over-provisioning. Uh, 
the solution here is we move to the hyperscale data center, which provides a solution to this challenge by provide a lot of a scaling um, capability. So in a hyperscale data center, it breaks the, uh, the physical uh, server or oriented uh, model through the, uh, the hardware dis disaggregation. Here, uh, the disaggregation means the each type of resource in the data center, you can just uh, consider it as a disaggregate uh, pool of resource. Uh, so a logic server can compose uh, of a subset of each, each hardware resource, like uh, uh, com uh, compute storage networking resource. Uh, you know, this approach will bring a great uh, flexibility and scalability to data center infrastructure, allowing the operator to, uh, to manage resource more efficiently and uh, just uh, according to your demands. Uh, Intel rack scale design technology allows the user consider the compute storage networking as a pooled resource. Uh, so user can, uh, th this resource can be uh, composed on the fly to meet the virus the, 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 uh, demands uh, in the data center. So disaggregation, in addition to allowing hardware refresh at a different rate of uh, each storage, uh, storage compute networking. Uh, so imagine, imagine a cloud that can be glow and shrink uh, to meet a different demands, uh, which allows to such a dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, uh, composition and release the resource, we, where a user can might compose a node for with a uh, copious storage or other just uh, with a, you know powerful com a powerful compute horsepower. Uh, there are f uh, here uh, there are four critical uh, Intel RSD value proposition: flexible, manageable, uh, economic, and open. Here, flexible it means uh, RSD allows user to quickly configure the customer a uh, customized system uh, to meet the diverse uh, workload by using the composable infrastructure. And uh, uh, based on the, as I mentioned before, based on the uh, pooled uh, uh, hardware resource. And the uh, manageable here means uh, RSD provide a powerful API-based software stack. So user can use it to easily discover, compose, uh, and monitor the or uh, hardware resource like racks, uh, uh, systems, the switches, and uh, all those components in the RSD cluster. And uh, in Inamico, uh, it, obviously with the RSD flexible capability, user will only buy and uh, upgrade uh, the hardware resource when, when it really need it. Uh, it helps users to avoid the additional cost of over-provisioning. And uh, the last one is open. Uh, open here means uh, RSD uses uh, you know, uh, open industry uh, standard and API for the, uh, you know, the redfish uh, from the DMD DMTF. And it uh, opened the uh, uh, open, res sorry. Okay. It, uh, uh, it opened our reference design for the both uh, RSD hardware and software uh, stack. Uh, as I mentioned before, today's data center are still building on the traditional architecture, which uh, where it can take uh, days or weeks to uh, to provision a new service. So this uh, traditional data center also typically run with poor utilization of hardware resource. Obviously, it will, it will drive up the, the costs. Uh, the one, uh, one market change uh, indicated that uh, the, 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 the server in data center are still under 
utilized by 15% in, in data center. So with RSD technology, it will help to speed up the innovation of the data center in the future. It will save you money by uh, increase the utilization of data center and provide the hardware, hardware resource as, as you want. Uh, here uh, is some details about the, all the disaggregator hardware resource in the RSD. Uh, there are three major kinds of resource, compute, storage, and network. For compute uh, a resource, a uh, user can specify how many cores the, the model and uh, the, the brand of C, uh, the CPU and uh, the capacity and uh, the uh, frequency of memory when user to compose a node. Uh, for storage, uh, current uh, RSD support two, uh, two kinds of storage, uh, local storage and the remote storage. For local storage, user can uh, also can specify the capacity of a local SATA device. And uh, one more thing here is uh, in the latest uh, RSD 2.1 release, it supports uh, the user to dynamic to attach an MME device or detach it from the existing uh, compose node. Mm, yeah, obviously for the remote storage, it supports uh, ASCASI uh, storage. And uh, for networking, you can just uh, specify uh, the, the bandwidth of each the networking interface. And uh, here is uh, one, one more kind of resource I want to talk about is the uh, accelerator, which, uh, which, which should belong to the compute resource, right? But uh, I just list here because it's so simple uh, for the current data center. As you know, AI, deep learning, machine learning is hot. Maybe, maybe they are hot, like on fire. So uh, uh, obviously, this accelerator is a required part of, of, of it. Current RSD doesn't support this kind of accelerator but it will be added uh, very soon. So as a first step, uh, RSD will allow user to specify the accelerator requirement when you, uh, spe uh, when, when you compose a node. So uh, when RSD re re uh, gets the request, it will do some simple filter in the uh, compute uh, resource pool and find uh, the, the proper node with the with the accelerator. And uh, the next step, the RSD will support the dynamic to attach a detach accelerator to the, to the compose node over PCIe. Uh, here is two RSD related client tools in OpenStack, RSDlib and uh, RSD client. Uh, RSDlib extend the, uh, the SUSE library to increase, uh, increase the functionality of in, Intel RSD. Uh, capacity in, the RSD, uh, in this library, uh, user can just uh, logic, uh, do the logical node composition and uh, decomposition to, uh, to do remote storage discovery and uh, composition. Also, as I mentioned before, to the MME device attach and detach. Uh, the initial version has been released, uh, I mean, for the RSDlib, which is compatible with the RSD 2.1 version. And the second project uh, here is the Python-RSD client, which is a client for the uh, RSD port manager API, and it's based on the uh, OpenStack client framework. Uh, it provides a Python a Python API and our RSD specific plugin for the OpenStack client. Uh, so user can, user and maybe other OpenStack service can use it to interact with the RSD port manager through the RSD lib library. Uh, here, uh, let's talk about the Valence project. It's an OpenStack project announced in the Barcelona summit. 
uh, which provides uh, the life cycle management of po uh, pooled uh, biometal hardware resource, and uh, it's based on the you know the disaggregate architecture. So by default, it, uh, it, uh, it's Intel SD. Um, but also, the Valence project uh, provides a driver, driver layer to allow user to use another uh, different driver to, uh, for the other discre uh, disaggregate architecture. The most uh, important feature for the Valence project uh, is compose hardware nodes on demand and release the resource when it doesn't need anymore. So somehow, uh, Valence, uh, you can consider, consider the Valence project as a, collect, uh, uh, a set of software uh, that will support the conception of the RST resource in the OpenStack. So besides the Valence core components, uh, it also provides the functionality to help uh, integrate uh, uh, Valence with uh, OpenStack. Uh, this picture describes the Valence architecture and how Valence will interact with the uh, uh, Intel uh, RSD pod manager. Mm, on the left, you can see the core components of Valence project. The first thing is uh, Valence Web GUI, which provides a friendly interface to, to a user to interact with the Valence API. Valence API, uh, which is a Python-based daemon based on the Flask, Flask framework, uh, to expose the uh, RESTful API as the, the other OpenStack service did. Uh, after API receives the user request, request, it will talk to the Valence controller to execute the real action. Uh, the, the controller will depend on the RSD Python library, RSD lib, to communicate with the pod manager, so like the Compose logic node. And uh, there are several plugins in Valence to support integrate with uh, OpenStack. One, use, one useful plugin is, uh, uh, in Valence is register the compo Compose node into the Ironic. Uh, to hand over the compose node to the ironic. Uh, using Valence, the data center admin can compose logic node either through the uh, Valence uh, web GUI or, or other maybe the deployment tools and other admin, to, admin tools like few like triple O to, uh, to deploy the OpenStack on the compose node. Uh, once this logic is composed, the admin can uh, deploy OpenStack service on top of it, or you can just treat it as a legacy uh, hardware node to provide them to the user as a biometric resource. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, current uh, major functionality of violence project. Mm. The first one, is uh, it supports uh, multiple uh, port manager on the backend. So when uh, Valence receive a node composition request, it have to decide which uh, port manager uh, should be used in this time according to you know, the different policy. Uh, uh, it makes sure the Valence have a horizontal scalability when just one, or one single port manager is not, is not enough. Uh, and uh, it, as I mentioned before, it allows users to compose node c according to the required uh, flavor or pro uh, pr property. Uh, user also can get the all RSD uh, resource details through the Valence Choir API, and uh, it uh, will use the default uh, 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 the default Redfish driver to communicate with the, R, uh, the Redfish hardware. Uh, the, the ironic in integration, as I mentioned before, it will help user to register the node into ironic. And, and uh, uh, even after the node is composed, the user still have a chance to upgrade to 
uh, somehow up, update or upgrade the node, like attach, detach more devices to the Compose node. Uh, the final feature is uh, automatic uh, discover the RSD resource in the valence. Uh, this, uh, it will get the all uh, device or uh, all resource, uh, resource status in RSD back to the valence and store in the DB. This feature is still un un under implementation. Mm. How user leverage, uh, leverage the valence feature to meet the different uh, workload requirement? They should, uh, at the first step, they should define the workload, uh, like how many resources is required, uh, how many CPU, how many memory, what kind of device you need. And uh, after you create the flavor in valence, you can just uh, compose that node based on the flavor, or user can just uh, uh, specify the property of a com uh, of node to the wireless API. Uh, once this node changed after, uh, I mean, uh, after uh, when the workload changed after you compose a node, like uh, you you, f uh, you found uh, this node is somehow short of storage, so you can just uh, use the, the uh, valence action to attach, detach, and when we did device or R other uh, device into the compose node. Uh, here is a diagram to show the workflow of all, all kinds of user re requests. So in general, a uh, user will invoke a valence API through the uh, client tools or the web GUI. Then API will notify the controller after receive the user uh, request. Controller will decide the you know the real action uh, according to the different policy and uh, the the uh, uh, resource status in the valence DB. Uh, then uh, the controller will communicate with the port manager through the Redfish API after the action is done in the real hardware, in the RST cluster, the valence will uh, get back the final status back to the valence DB. Uh, here, uh, I will not go through the every request workflow in details. Okay, it's demo time. Moment. Uh, you know, in the last uh, Boston Summit, we demoed uh, how to use Valence API to compose node. And uh, uh, after node composition, we used the Kala to deploy OpenStack on it. Uh, then we just uh, register node into Ironic to use it as a biometric resource. So today I will skip that part, but just focus on the new feature in the R3.2.1. It allows you to attach the and we MME device to the compost node. Okay, uh, here, uh, the first thing is uh, this is a dashboard. We just log in. And uh, after you log in, the first step you, you have to do is uh, register a new port manager into, uh, in, in, into this system. So we click the uh, add, a port, uh, add a new port manager here. Uh, we just need to uh, sorry. Yeah. We show the uh, we, we input the URL of a port manager and the username, password, credential to it. Yeah, after you register a new product manager, the valence will automatically to get our resource status spike. So from here, you can see we 
uh, how many targets uh, and devices in this port manager are available to, to the user. So here, uh, this tab is the NVMe storage. Now you can see we have a several devices here. Okay, uh, the next step is we use Valence API to compose a new lo node. And uh, here we can specify any requirement, like how many CPU, how many memory. And uh, uh, this will, uh, yeah, uh, okay, we can see it, it's uh, already composed. So you can see one node here. Uh, here we just uh, uh, export uh, this, uh, this compose node to Ironic. So it will handle over the node to Ironic at, from this point. Now, uh, yeah, we can see, uh, we can see uh, from Ar Ar Ironic, it can uh, see, see this compose node. Now we use uh, uh, Ironic to provision this node. We chose uh, operating system and uh, just uh, provision it. It might uh, take uh, several uh, seconds to provision it. Okay, uh, it's done. The status uh, the, the status is active, so we log in. We log in to the that node. Uh, uh, here, uh, we can show uh, we can see uh, there are only four disks on that node. So uh, next uh, thing we want to do is just uh, attach an NVMe device. We double check the, the device list here. And uh, from the compose node list, uh, yeah, you can see the instance is there. Here we, uh, we can attach the NVMe storage. Yeah, we choose the, the first two from the list and just uh, one click to attach it. Now, okay, uh, from the, uh, the MVE uh, storage list, you can see uh, the first two is in use. And uh, back to the system, we can see the new uh, PCIe device already, is already there. So here we just uh, mount the MVE uh, uh, device and uh, just uh, test the basic uh, I.O. operation on it. We mount, uh, we mount it to uh, 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 mount this MVE device and uh, uh, just uh, format it. And uh, we are trying to just uh, copy some uh, files into that disk to test uh, the I.O. operations. You can see it works. Okay, after the use, uh, you can just uh, back to the dashboard to detach the MVE device from that node. So we, we detach them. Okay, it's back to our available status. Uh, double check into the OS, you can see the two disk uh, is gone. And uh, uh, one more thing here is we 
also can just uh, uh, attach the NVMe device from the 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 storage list, not from the no from the uh, compose node list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's all for the demo. Uh, any questions? Anybody have a question? Yeah, yes, please. When you uh, detach that device, which you bring data to, uh, is the data like securely wiped in any way implicitly, or it's just like physically? Yeah, it's just uh, uh, somehow, you know, the MOE device is connected to the Compose Node through a PCI connection, a switch connection. So at that, at that point, so uh, it will just, uh, you know, break the connection. Yeah. So if you reconnect that same device to the same... Uh, uh, Compose node. To the same to the node you have, then you will have uh, the, the data available again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions? Okay, I guess no. Uh, thanks everyone for coming this session. Thank you. Thank you.